Okay, I'm going to start recording as well. Okay. Okay, whenever you're set, uh, Holly. Thank you very much. Okay. So welcome to this general assembly uh, of the ICH NGO forum for this uh, 2021. Uh, this um, meeting is held online, at, uh, but is hosted in the in the UNESCO convention for the uh, meeting of the 16th meeting, I'm sorry, of the committee. So in that regard, I will ask uh, Laurier to please uh, read the, the agenda. Thank you. Agenda. Okay. Okay, I'd like to say hello to everyone as well. Uh, bonjour à tout le monde. Ça fait plaisir de vous accueillir. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to welcome you to this meeting. I'm going to present uh, the, um, uh, the different points of the agenda. Um, uh, but before, uh, I'd like to uh, give some instructions. Um, I'll give them in, in English. Uh, um, and um, I'd like to, first of all, say that we have interpretation services in French and English. So uh, for our French speakers, uh, you can just turn on um, the uh, interpretation um, uh, button. Uh, press on the interpretation button at the, bo uh, the bottom left-hand um, uh, corner of your screen, the bottom left-hand corner of your, uh, right-hand corner, sorry, bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Um, uh, and for those who want interpretation uh, in English, uh, of course, uh, you just uh, press on uh, the English interpretation. Uh, uh, if you don't want inter interpretation, then you just uh, leave it uh, unactivated and you will be able to follow in both languages. Alors, je vais uh, uh, présenter les directives. So, let me uh, introduce the agenda and uh, the various directives in the French. I wanted to welcome the French speakers also to this meeting and point out that we have interpretation for this meeting, online interpretation, which uh, is provided by uh, the UNESCO Living Heritage Unit. You can access the interpretation uh, from English into French by clicking on the icon, which is in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, there, uh, that's the way to access interpretation into French or into English. Then I wanted to give you some instructions as to how to take the floor. When you want to take the floor, please raise your hand or even better, click on the raise hand function. Uh, it's an, an icon at the bottom of your screen towards the right. And once you have raised your hand, you will be given the floor and you will be able to speak. We invite you to use the the uh, hand uh, hand up hand down uh, icon, which is at the uh, bottom right hand corner of your screen. So if you have any questions, if you have proposals, comments to make, uh, please um, press on the um, on that function to raise your hand, uh, so that we can um, let you uh, let you speak. Uh, and don't forget to put it down once you have finished speaking, okay? <laughs> it's very important, also a very important point. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> the General Assembly uh, uh, will be uh, chaired by uh, Jorge uh, Gustavo uh, Casedo, um, uh, who, is, who is also the chair of the uh, steering committee. According to our bylaws, it is the chair of the steering committee that, um, that chairs the uh, annual meeting. Um, 
So the agenda proposed will have an opening uh, um, point one. Uh, then uh, uh, we have uh, Mr. We've invited Mr. Marco van Ballen, uh, director of the Dutch Center for Intangible Cultural Heritage, uh, to say uh, a few words uh, in memory of our good friend and colleague uh, Albert van der Zinden, who, uh, as you all know, suddenly passed away uh, this uh, last summer. Um, then uh, after um, that um, presentation by uh, Marco Van Bellen, uh, uh, we will adopt uh, the agenda. Um, then we will adopt the minutes of the, uh, of the general annual, annual meeting of 220. Uh, those minutes uh, have been, um, uh, are on the forum website, are in French and English, uh, and uh, they have been there for more than a week now. So you can, uh, you have been able to ac access them uh, on the forum website. Um, we will then go on to the um, presentation, the results, presentation of the results of the elections, uh, uh, which will, and the proclamation of the, of, the, um, of the results of the elections, which will be done by uh, the chair of the electoral board this year, who is Monica Tumingas, okay, of, um, uh, she, she is the chair of CIOF. Uh, uh, then uh, point six, um, there will be the report of the steering committee's activities uh, from December 220 to December 221. Uh, and that report will be presented by uh, our chair, Jorge Gustavo Caicedo uh, and, and myself, but it will be especially Jorge who will be presenting. Uh, uh, then uh, point seven, the financial report uh, of the steering committee. Uh, that has, uh, Robert uh, will be presenting uh, the uh, financial report and uh, will be sharing the screen uh, to, um, uh, to indicate, uh, you know, the different transactions that have gone out in our account. Then point eight um, uh, will be the presentation of the plan of activities for 221. And that will be Janet Blake. Uh, uh, Janet Blake will be presenting uh, the plan of activities, uh, and I think she will also be sharing the screen. Then we have the resolution uh, to have uh, the current members of the steering committee uh, to complete the mapping project. Uh, I'll explain that in more detail, but uh, it's to uh, uh, UNESCO has, um, we have uh, gotten a mandate from UNESCO to, um, to do a project um, to map the expertise of NGOs and uh, uh, the project is not uh, complete yet, uh, so we would like to uh, have a resolution adopted so that the outgoing members of the steering committee can stay on for uh, a short time, uh, a month or two, so that we can finish uh, that project. Um, stay on, not on the steering committee, of course, but on the project. Um, then there will be uh, the presentation of uh, the work that the working group on uh, article, the ad hoc working group on article 21 of the bylaws will be presenting. And I understand it's Hannah Schreiber who will be uh, presenting the work that they have done. And then in other business, uh, we have, um, the steering committee has uh, requested that we uh, look, um, uh, that there is a, a study and um, you know a revision of the electoral rules. Uh, we have had some uh, problems um, with the electoral rules. There are some contradictions uh, within them. Uh, the electoral board has brought to our attention certain problems, and so we would like to uh, strike an ad hoc working group to undertake this task in 222. Okay. Uh, then uh, there were some requests uh, by um, our colleague Antoine Gauthier, um, first of all, to uh, revise the logo of the form, which is available in French and English, but uh, uh, Antoine has uh, requested that uh, there is either one in both languages or that uh, the French version, uh, uh, the French version be uh, larger and more visible. Uh, then uh, Antoine has also um, requested uh, a revision of Article 27 of the bylaws, and then uh, has also uh, requested that the bylaws that were adopted in English in Bogota uh, be um, changed uh, so that they are adopted 
under the French version, uh, and uh, we will um, we will be able to discuss that uh, later on as well. Okay. Um, yes, I see Antoine has his hand up. Uh, yes, Antoine. Merci beaucoup, Laurier, d'avoir félicitations. Yes, thank you, Laurier. Congratulations for the work carried out by the steering committee. A lot of work. Thank you very much. Uh, now, somebody uh, this week sent an email shortly after uh, and uh, Re requesting three points to be added to the agenda. And one of them is the presence of the French language. And so there are three items which haven't been added. First of all, the acceptance or not uh, of online uh, voting by members. There was an email sent out to all the members. And then also the uh, discussion on Article 27, because, of course, we're not requesting a revision of uh, the bylaws, but an adaptation of a French version, a legal uh, version. So maybe you could uh, add an item on, on Article 27 bylaws, and then another item on the specific code of ethics for the members of the steering committee, uh, not under any other business, but as uh, separate items. Antoine, can you recall uh, which article you referred to for the use of French? I didn't have time to take it down. So three distinct items before any other business and uh, one for AOB, which is the presence of French in the communication regarding the forum. These are things which are already sent in by email. Yes, but there were several emails. Uh, right, so I, I'm repeating this. So there are the items we want to see. What you have under 11C, could you simply put it up higher on the agenda? Article 27 of the bylaws, I was suggesting that it be uh, taken as a separate item higher up in the agenda, not under any other business. And then there are the three other items. OK, but the, what, what are those other items then? The same I sent by email. So could you please uh, respect the democracy of our forum when something is uh, uh, proposed and members can add things to the agenda we respect democracy Antoine don't, don't don't accuse us please no I'm not accusing anyway anybody right so just tell us exactly what you'd like to see on the agenda so to uh, accept or not online voting for the members and I am not under any other business, but a, a separate item, please. So online voting. So Laurier, you understand that it is a separate point before other business. So I'm letting you type them out. Okay. Look, look. Our understanding, uh, our understanding that this was going to be uh, added to other business because uh, the steering committee has the um, has the the privilege to establish the agenda. Uh, we had already done that, and uh, 
uh, you know, these were to be added in other business. Uh, so maybe I'll let uh, Jorge, uh, Jorge oui, as point on, point on, so you can maybe intervene. I have a... That seems to be the proper procedure. Um, Point d'ordre, s'il vous plaît, Laurier, j'aimerais retirer. Laurier, please. Uh, uh, this is a point of order. This is an item which was put forward and supported ahead of time in order for it to be a separate item uh, of the agenda. Um, and. Uh, uh, the steering committee suggests an agenda and people can add items if uh, their request is supported. And that was the case. Antoine, uh, the question is, we add points to the agenda. We can't start the meeting uh, a week or three days after. So I'm following procedure here, which is to add items to the agenda under any other business. And that is what we're doing, uh, because we can't start uh, uh, meetings before the meeting. So the items are duly on the agenda under any other business. And I think that that is totally in keeping with our democratic procedures. I don't think we could do anything else, but I'll ask the uh, chairman to come in and decide. Jorge, uh, maybe could you, uh, um, have you followed the conversation? Uh, were you able to follow it in English? Uh, 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 because uh, I think there's a, a question of procedure here. Uh, Antoine, uh, uh would like his proposals to be uh in uh, uh not in in other business uh, but um uh in other you know higher up in the agenda uh, i understood that when you propose um additional points in the uh, agenda it does go under uh, other business and is dealt with uh, there Yes, it's going to be included and it's fully uh, acknowledged. I tried to answer your, your questions, Antoine, but gladly we can take it to the assembly so we can discuss it. But we need to, to you know, follow the, the agenda because we have documents that must be read and procedures. We have the Marco. I would like Marco just to deliver the speech and then move on with the election. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot just, of things to cover. So let's yeah, move please, on, please. Please, I just, I just don't want to add. Je veux pas en rajouter beaucoup. Je veux simplement dire. There isn't much I'm asking for. It's just a test for the democracy of our organization right now to be able to add items to the agenda. There are items that I wish to add to the agenda for which members of the steering committee are uh, potentially in a situation of conflict of interests, or at least what looks like a conflict of interest. And I believe it is useful for all members of our forum to, uh, to um, um, make decisions on those items. We are a sovereign organization. Everything was sent prior to the meeting with the documents, the PDF attached. Uh, about a week ago, I believe people can vote. We shouldn't be afraid to vote. People can vote for or against these proposal proposals but what i ask is for these questions to be discussed in the agenda and not in the other business because in the other business uh, section of the agenda one cannot vote so i am asking you to uh, add these items as items in the agenda why couldn't we vote why can we proceed to a vote a vote in uh, uh, very um, antoine on all those points um well if if we if we agree that we can vote on the other business it, then it doesn't matter okay but if if we do, if we can't vote because normally we cannot have a vote on the other business then i will ask to put it another point please yeah. thank you well i think we can uh we can agree to vote uh, if need be uh, on those points um uh uh, because we have some very, uh, you know, I mean, pressing and urgent uh, 
uh, decisions to be made. We have reports to, uh, to present. Uh, these have to absolutely be done uh, because they have to be done during the annual meeting. So, uh, uh, okay, so if we all agree that we can, we can vote uh, uh, on those, all of those points, uh, uh, I think we can proceed. Um, thank okay. you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you so much uh, for your patience. All. Um, uh, <clears throat> sorry, it took so long. Uh, uh, so, can we adopt the? Um, uh, oh, we're, we're, no, no, we're not adopting the agenda yet. Uh, <laughs> we'll start with um, uh, Marco's presentation uh, in memory of Albert. Uh, please, uh, Marco. Did you want to share a screen or did you have something? Uh... Yeah, first of all, I... yeah, I have, a, I have some okay. slides, so I'll yeah. share them with you. Yeah, okay. Okay, share screen. Should be the right one, <laughs> this one. And then I'll go for, let's see. Oh, you're all... <laughs> can touch the bottom. Um, right. Sorry. I have to get rid of you because you're on. Yes, thank you. We get, we get, um, we can see the share screen. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Marco is saying something. He's muted. Marco, I think you're muted. We can't hear yeah. you. Sorry, okay. I, I did. Now I'm unmuted. I didn't see that. Sorry. I'll start again. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, and I said before I was uh, when I was still muted that I'm addressing you all in English because my English is better than my French. So that's the reason. Um, dear colleagues. I would like to start by thanking the steering group of the ICH NGO forum for giving me the floor at the start of the, its general assembly to speak in memory of our beloved colleague, Dr. Albert van der Zijde, who passed away so suddenly on Friday, July 30th, at the age of 64. His totally unforeseen death has shocked and affected many people around the globe, considering all the reactions his family in the Dutch Center for Intangible Cultural Heritage have received. On behalf of his family and his closest colleagues of our center, I would like to express my gratitude for all the signs of sympathy that, we sh that were shared. Sorry. Um, Albert, as a trained historian, worked for almost 35 years in the field of intangible cultural heritage and folk culture. In recent years, Albert worked as head of the research and development department of the Dutch at the Dutch Center for Intangible Cultural Heritage, previously known as Dutch Center for Popular Culture. And from 2012, after the ratification in the Netherlands of the 2003 UNESCO Convention for the Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage as the Dutch Center for Popular Culture and Intangible Heritage. Um, sorry, yeah, I have to do two things at once and I'm not good at that. <laughs> In 2002, Albert obtained his doctorate as historian at the University of Amsterdam. This is the, uh, the cover of the book on Catholic identity and historical awareness. W.J.F. Nyons and his National Historiography. Catholic culture and historiography was one of his main, many great passions, which he liked to write and talk about. In recent years, at the Dutch Center for Intangible Cultural Heritage, Albert grew in his role from researcher to head of department in the field of research and development of unintangible heritage. Under his leadership, the research agenda 2017-2020, that's the, the image on the right as the cover, Intangible Heritage as a Testing Ground for a Globalizing Community was created, in which Albert 
personally focused on sustainable tourism and intangible cultural heritage. He gave leadership to a team of four colleagues. Here they are. Supplemented by trainees with great enthusiasm and in his own unique way. He showed himself to be a committed, inspiring, generous and social leader. And who are we seeing here next to Albert? We see Sophie Elpers, who's also in the crowd. Many of you will know her also connected to CF. Susanne Verburg, Mark Schep, who we'll see on another slide because he was with Albert in Bogota two years ago. And yet, Barco. I'm sorry, Albert, but we we can only see the image of of. I'm sorry, Marco. I, we can only yeah. see the image of Albert. The All first the time. Light. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yes, shit. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I don't know what went wrong then. I'll try again. <laughs> I'm living. I'm convinced. I'm showing you. Yeah. No. The we're just seeing the first slide. You only see. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, well, technique. <laughs> How can that go wrong? Okay, so. Sorry. Did you, do, do you now see the second slide or? You don't no, see actually, anything we don't, uh, you'd have to share the screen again. Yeah, well, I'm trying. I'm, at least I'm, it says that it's shared, but. Wow. You have to apparently. use the function slideshow, Marco. The function yeah. slideshow. Yeah, this, yeah. One, this one, but it's not on you share. You have to share again. Yeah, you sorry. Sorry, now. folks. I go out and wait. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> this is where I should be. Yeah. And then share screen. How funny. Okay, here. Now, now it's now we have it. Uh... Now, okay. Well, I started with this one. <laughs> I'll do a quick roundup. This was Albert. Oh, sorry. Uh, this was Albert in different stages of his career. This was the booklet, booklet of the cover of his uh, PhD. And then we have the research agenda on the right hand side that we finished last year. And this is the team that Albert was leading and you just heard Sophie who's next to him on the right hand side and Mark the tall guy you'll see him on a different slide as well because he was in Bogota with Albert okay again, sorry. sorry Marco we can still only see the first slides oh gee He's standing with the glasses I'm really sorry yeah I don't know what I'm doing then because it says I'm screen sharing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Marco. You are doing everything perfectly. And in your computer, you are changing the slides. However, Zoom is having some problems with the slideshow mode. And I have the same several days before. So you have to specifically click on the left side on okay. a specific slide with your with your with your uh, mouse part. Yes, or, I will. Thank you. And then if you if you then we will see the change. However, if you only do it uh, in the slide mode, then we will not. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, Anna. What slide are you seeing now? I'm sorry, people. Uh, just the first. the first one. Still you the first need to, one. You need to click on the second or on the third. Uh, yes, okay. Yep. Yeah, well, you still see only the work. first one? Yeah. Yes, because you are, Probably we will not solve this issue, yeah. But it's a Zoom issue. It's not your problem. It, it no, is but now, I should be... Uh, I sh I should be able Working. to comprehend what you're saying. So, um, do you have well, it on full screen on your computer? Sorry. Do you have the slides on full screen on your computer? Yeah, yeah, I have. We don't see. We just put it off the full screen, and okay. then just click the slides one by one mm -hmm. by mouse. Okay, I will. So I go out of this. Sorry. Somebody's taking over. That's better, I think. Okay, thank you, Kaloyan. <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll continue talking. Um, yeah, I was just telling you that Albert had been leading the Department of Research and Development. Can you give me the next slide, Kaloyan? Or no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> It, it takes time, but one thing that can be done is to make a PDF document, 
because but, it shares PDF much more effectively than PowerPoint. Okay, yeah, I didn't so, do that. Just keep it in PowerPoint. Uh -huh. um, so what do you suggest that I do that? Maybe, I'm not sure. I, if is I may suggest, I, I'm sorry, if I may suggest, I think what is important is what you say. Yeah, yeah. I know that, that we too. live in a picture culture, but we also yeah, knew by heart how Albert was great, and we want to listen to your story. And yeah, even I'll... if the slides are not working, that's yeah, yeah. okay. Then I'll I agree, Hannah. I'll put I'll put the portrait back on, and I'll show. I'll send you the slides later, uh, and I can also send you the text. But I'll keep I'll I'll keep uh, focusing on the text. Okay, thanks. That would be great. Yeah, uh, yeah. Great we'll do that. Yeah. Not to lose more time. Okay, um, so. I said uh, that he was running the department. Okay, uh, Albert always saw new opportunities to cooperate, which enabled him to build a large international network. His contributions to the policy of the Dutch Center for Intangible Cultural Heritage have been indispensable. The same applies to his work within the ICH NGO Forum of UNESCO, in which Albert represented the Dutch Center Albert absolutely believed in international collaboration and learning from each other within the UNESCO family. He worked on the Dutch nominations for the international lists regarding intangible cultural heritage, such as the Craft of the Miller in 2017 and the Course of Culture this year, and was an important advisor to the Dutch State Party, a current member of the Intergovernmental Committee. From 2014 until 2015, he was a member of the evaluation body. And last but not least, he was the coordinator of the working group research, which he helped to develop a task that filled him with pride and inspiration. Albert was also closely involved in international expert groups related to the UNESCO Convention for the Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage. All these tasks energized him as he loved to connect with people. The months before he passed away, Albert was busy preparing the presentation of the research agenda 2021-2024. Its research areas will include sustainability, diversity, and inventory methods, themes that were close to his heart. This research agenda will be presented in the first half of 2022, and the outcome will be delivered in 2024. Next to his job at the center and the many tasks he fulfilled linked to UNESCO, Albert started working as a research fellow, heritage studies at the Utrecht University in 2017. His reconnection with the university that originally trained him as an historian filled him with pride. Albert was also very much involved in the coming, up, coming, coming about and editing of publications. He would also always focus on the output of research and lend a critical but inspiring eye when needed. He was a passionate and involved editorial board member of the Flemish Dutch journal Volkskunde for almost 20 years. Since 2013, he was also a member of the editorial board of the international internet magazine Heritage Alive, Voices and Practices, which is affiliated with the IC, ICH NGO Forum, who I want to thank for their dedication, for dedicating their, their latest edition to Albert. Thank you. Albert regularly published articles on intangible heritage and intangible heritage policy, including controversial heritage, tourism, and ethics within both the national and international context. Those who followed Albert on social media cannot have failed to notice that he had many interests and passions. Because of Albert, many people regularly viewed in their timeline opinion pieces, reviews, and considerations on topics from the field of intangible cultural heritage and beyond. With his witty reflections on the professional field, his private life and other hobbies and interests, he stimulated thinking, discussion, or simply generated a smile. Albert was living a full life and he was far from finished doing so. We will miss him greatly as a person, a colleague, and an inspiring researcher. We cannot fully comprehend yet that we will no longer we will not longer encounter him in the office nor on our screen during the video meetings which always Albert always attended in good spirits i would like to close by thanking the ICH NGO steering group for commemorating albert and paying tribute in its report on its activities in 2020 2021 to the contributions albert has made 
to the understanding and furthering of ICH in the Netherlands and worldwide. Thank you very much for your attention and for having inspired Albert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Marco, for those. Yeah, sorry for. Uh... <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry, you know, about the PowerPoint presentation, but um, I think phone. it was the the oral the oral um, narrative that was most important and very it was very moving. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you for having me. Yeah, being allowed to say this. <clears throat> um. So now I guess we can move to the um, uh, other points of the agenda. Uh, just wait, I'll try to share my screen here. I hope it's gonna work. Uh, um, because I know I have had issues with Zoom myself uh, with this, the business of changing slides. So uh, I know it can be kind of quite a problem. Okay, so I guess um, we can move on now to the adoption of the agenda. Uh, uh, as uh, we have uh, agreed upon. So uh, our, if I hear no objections, uh, we can adopt the agenda uh, as is. I hear no objections, therefore we'll adopt the agenda. Um, we'll go on to the adoption of the minutes uh, of uh, the general um, meeting of 220. Uh, as uh, I indicated earlier, they're on the website. Uh, um, and uh, they're in French and English. Um, uh, so, um, are there any questions, uh, comments? Maybe, sorry to interrupt, but would it be possible that someone of the steering committee puts the links each time in the, the chat? Also, the chat is not open, so we cannot communicate to you without interrupting. It would be very uh, helpful to, to have just the chat opened. Okay, I'll listen, I'll look into that. Uh, um, uh, with the, the link to the minutes, uh, well, actually, um, uh, you know, Hyorin, uh, they, they're on the, um, uh, you can just click on the website, the forum website, they're all available there. Uh, on yeah, the but agenda. I have been looking, it's not so easy to find them, actually. Okay. So, if, if just someone during the meeting can uh, put some links, I think it's helpful for many members. Okay. Okay. It's just that it's a little awkward for me to do it right now because I'm trying to concentrate on <laughs> presenting. I understand the someone else can do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and having to sort of look after all sorts of other things. So uh, thank you for your patience. And, and uh, uh, I would just direct you right now to the... Um, to the form uh, website, uh, all of the all of the documents are there. Okay. Um, now, uh, so can um, uh, we could adopt uh, the minutes of the um, of the meeting of two twenty? Uh, uh, are there any um, comments, um, uh, additions, um, corrections to be made to the minutes of uh, last year's meeting? I hear none, so we will consider the minutes of the uh, Forum General Meeting of 220 adopted. Um, we can now move on to uh, the election of the new members of the uh, Forum Steering Committee. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, the chair of the, steering, of the electoral board, uh, Monica Domingas, uh, is with us and she will be presenting uh, the report of the electoral board. Monica, I can switch over to you now. Hello, everyone. I'll try to share my screen. We're going to see what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop my share. Hopefully you can see the first slide. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. If I'm going to switch to second and nothing happens, then please somebody shout at me. Thank you. Okay, so well, try it right. Uh, perhaps try it right now, Monica, to see if it works. Oh yes, that's right. Very good. Works. Recommendation. Recommend everyone to use Mac. It seems Mac works today. Okay. <laughs> so uh, hello everyone. My name is Monica Domingas. I'm from Estonia. 
and I would say good evening too because it's very dark here at least and uh, I'm really happy to introduce you the election results the most interesting part of today hopefully not hopefully not okay and uh, I'm very happy that uh, there were four of us on the electoral board so uh, next to me working tightly was Miss Patricia Timberio from the International Association for Falconry and Conservation of Bird of Prey. Uh, there was also in the board, Mr. Rani Casimir Kingston Chokmunyolium from Center for Peace Building and Poverty Reduction among African Indigenous Peoples. And also Ms. Barbara Bebetera from Cross Cultural Foundation of Uganda. And I was representing uh, from the International Council of Organizations of Folklore Festivals and Folk Arts shortly sets you off. I'm the uh, I'm not the chair of it, I'm uh, the culture, uh, head of the Culture Commission, so culture is my topic. And uh, just shortly also about the election process. So the voting was only online this year because of the situation we have ongoing in the world, and, do, and I do believe it was reasonable to have it. Of course, having an online vote is always a bit complicated. And the system worked that way that first the NGOs had to register for the vote, and then they received a link for voting. Uh, the deadline for registration was December the 14th, uh, Paris time, so it was uh, supposed first supposed to be yesterday morning at 9am that you had to register, but we had an issue that on the deadline, uh, on the ho home page, the deadline was 9pm, so there was a 12 hour difference, and when it came out that there was a problem with it, we received a letter, thank you for writing about it, we decided to extend the registration. But there was an, a small like technical complication that uh, it took a bit of time. Uh, and then the people who registered after 9 a.m. only received the link in the evening after 9 p.m. So it took 12 hours for them to receive the link. That was a bit of an issue, but still they had more than 12 hours after receiving the link to take part in the elections. So I'm really sorry for this uh, mistake because uh, during uh, the introduction of the candidates uh, the day before yesterday, uh, I also mentioned at least twice that the deadline for registration is 9 a.m. And but there was this short sad mistake on the home page, but we tried to solve it as good as possible. And what we also did was uh, our great assistant with uh, the election, Gabriela Desiderio. Well, he was the one who also sent two reminders uh, to take part in the elections. And there are a few things to take into consideration while doing the voting online. First thing is that a lot, for a lot of people, I guess the voting links went into spam. So we had to remind people several times, please check your spam folder. Uh, I also received one letter saying that some email service providers are very, very slow and some didn't receive the link in time. So maybe the voting period could be extended a bit more or the system could be organized a bit differently maybe I'm not going to say it, but as you also men mentioned before, there's going to be a committee working on it and discussing how the voting could be different. And there's also the question, is there any way how to introduce the candidates better? Because uh, we had the online introduction and it was also afterwards on YouTube, the CVs and uh, letters of intent were also on uh, the homepage available, but there's always the question, could the candidates be introduced better? Because uh, during the meeting where the candidates introduced themselves, we had about 40 viewers at that time. I hope, I really hope that maybe some also re watched it afterwards, but there is always this question. So maybe there could also be video intro introductions made earlier. And uh, the result is that 53 NGOs voted on the elections. Of course, the results could be better, but I don't think it, I wouldn't say that it's a bad result. I think uh, the elections uh, were in that way a success. And we had enough votes and uh, we have all the candidates were really, really, really good. And uh, it was really good for me to be the neutral one that I didn't have to make a decision because some of the candidates were really, really good. But only uh, just to put out there a few reminders. So the members are elected for a two year period. Probably you know this once, you know this already and they can be re-elected re once. And the mandate will start today and will end in two years time. And candidates receiving the most votes will be elected for the steering committee. If two or more candidates for the same region receive the same number of votes, 
then a second round will not be organized and the candidate will be selected through a draw of lots by a person designated by the lecture board. This is really taken from the uh, document that it's uh, said how the elections should, should take place. And of course, uh, the candidates who will be elected today, uh, who are the results are said about today, are invited to deliver a short speech. So please, all the candidates who are here, we'll, I would be very happy to hear a few words from you. So I'll get to the more interesting part now, the results. So we'll pull, I'll first start with the African region. And uh, we had one candidate. We had Seko Berta from Mali Cultural Heritage In Agency. And I'm happy to say that uh, he received 52 votes. So that was 98% of the votes. So I'm very happy to say the result that Seko Berta from the Mali Cultural Heritage Agency is a new member of the steering committee. So please, clapping hands. And uh, I saw that Seko was also here. So maybe you'd like to say a few words also. Your microphone, Seku. Yes, I think you're muted. Oh, I need to give my speech now? Yes. Oh, thank you. May I share my screen? Okay. Yes, you can. Yes. <coughs> well, uh, thank you, dear colleagues. I will express myself in French. Okay, uh, uh, cher collègue. Dear colleagues, dear members of the ICH NGO Forum, dear members of the Secretariat of UNESCO, ladies and gentlemen, dear members of the Electoral Board, I would like to thank you all Thank you so much for your trust and for your teamwork and your commitment. Thank you for welcoming me as a new member of the steering committee for the ICH NGO Forum. It is a fascinating teamwork that is gradually being built This teamwork relies on a mutual goal, which is to build our organization faithfully and sustainably in order to partake into the sustainable implementation of the 2003 Convention for Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage as ever. I am very honored and humbled and very happy. I would like to thank you once more. And I would like to thank Jorge Gustavo Caicedo, the chair of the outgoing steering committee for his leadership. And his teamwork. I would also like to reiterate my gratitude to the UNESCO Secretariat, to the ICH NGOs Forum Steering Committee. And last but not least, I would like to thank the Electoral Board, especially Mrs. Monica Tomingas, for this wonderful work. Thank you so much for conducting such a fair, transparent process. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Seko. Thank you for the kind words. And also congratulations, also, of course. So I'm very happy to continue to, with the Arab States region. We had one candidate. We had Mohamed Mohamed Lamine Bedieu 
from the Association Mauritanienne for the Sauvegarde Patrimoine Culturel et Matériel. And I'm very happy to say that he received 51 votes. So that was 96% 90, of the votes. So as a result, I'm very happy to introduce Mohamed Mohamed Lemine Bidieu as a new member of the steering committee. So Mohamed, are you also here today? I think I saw you. Would you say, like to say a few words? Your microphone, Mohamed. Oh, thank you. Bonjour, j'espère que je suis entendu maintenant. Good evening, I hope everyone can hear me. Absolutely, we can hear you. Yes, yes, we can hear you. You can hear me. Yes, we can. I would like to thank all of the participants and the voters. I would also like to thank the committee and the electoral board who conducted this hard process given the, given the circumstances and given the difficulties represented by the technology, I know it wasn't hard, it wasn't easy. I will be available for the forum and I hope I will be able to help the forum, especially on some issues that I mentioned earlier, including increasing the utmost participation of civil society. I work with civil society, so I am going to focus on this issue in, Ar in the Arab world and French speaking countries more generally. And I would like to thank the bureau, the outgoing bureau for their wonderful work. I know it wasn't no easy task in the current circumstances. They had to work online and bring together all the members. I would like to thank my colleague who was the representative of the Arab world and who supported me and supported the Arab NGOs. I would like to thank all of my friends that are here today and I hope I can contribute to the forum in a positive way as a member of the steering committee. I am available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much and really congratulations. I wish you all the best. So the Eastern European region, we had three candidates. We had Fazil Kazimov from Ashik Shamshir Cultural Center Public Union, Siliana Yorgova from National Section of Tsiok Bulgaria, and Tamara Nikolic Deric from Association House of Vatana. And here are the results. So Fazil Kazimov received 13 votes, that was 25%. Siliana Yorgova received 15 votes, that was 28%. And Tamara Nikolic Deric received 25 votes, that was 47% of the votes. As a result, I'm very happy to introduce Tamara Nikolic Deric to the steering committee. Tamara, are you here today with us? Hello, good evening, dear colleagues, um, <coughs> dear members of the ICH NGO Forum. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to everyone who exercised their vote, their right to vote, and the ones who voted for House of Batan Association. As member of an association uh, active throughout the Mediterranean and as member of the Global Facilitators Network with professional experience in Europe as well as, as well as in Central Asia, I would like to reassure all members of the regional group that we will support and represent equally all needs and interests of our members. It is an honor and privilege to start this journey with all others new elected uh, members whom I cordially uh, congratulate. Uh, I would like to extend a special thanks to Mr. Kaloyan Nikolov for his dedicated work done until now and for his support. Thank you, everyone. 
Thank you so much, Tamara, and uh, congratulations, and good luck on the steering committee. So one more, and um, I would like to say that things will get a bit interesting now. So from Latin American and Caribbean region, we had two candidates. We had Claudia Hurtado from Cross of Chile Foundation and Martin Andrade Peret from Erigaya Foundation. And the results are as following. We have 26 votes on both of them and they both received 49% of the votes. So there was one person, uh, so we had 53 people who voted. So one person decided not to make a choice that could have decided who would be the winner here. But as I said before, uh, so we have a tie here and the candidate will be selected for a draw of lots. As I mentioned before, this is how we're supposed to go. So to make it very fair, as fair as possible, then <coughs> I'm gonna do a wheel where I have entered inside both of the names. I'm gonna share a screen with you also in a second. So you're gonna see who is gonna win. So that it won't be my choice, really. There will be no person doing weird things with different signs or anything. There is really a big wheel, as you can see, hopefully. And as you can see, I have entered both Claudia's and Martin's name here, both four times. I'm sorry, both four times. And uh, so there is a bigger possibility of chance. So I will just roll the wheel now. So good luck to both of you. So as we all could see, the winner is Martin Andrade Peret. Congratulations, you were just chosen by luck. <laughs> but still you had 26 votes, so that's a very good result. So Martin, are you here today with us? Yes, I was very nervous. <laughs> I, um, I, I will do it in, in, in French, it's easier for me. So aussi je veux remercier I'd like to thank the steering committee because they've really done some excellent work. I'd like to congratulate uh, Gustavo and uh, everyone who voted because uh, it's important to hold elections, to have people voting. There were 52 and hopefully next time there will be more. A greater turnout, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Monica, for excellent work. So uh, the ICH NGO Forum Steering Committee, I've been here for several years, and I think I can uh, serve, uh, uh, maintain uh, uh, ties with UNESCO and between NGOs and civil society. Thank you very much. So thank you also. Congratulations, Martin. And uh, you had luck today on your side, I would say. Everyone could see it. So uh, also uh, for the ending words, I would like to thank everyone uh, who sent in all the applications to all the candidates. You were really all very good and interesting people and I wish you all the best and at least uh, good luck. And maybe next time you will be a new candidate because oh, next year maybe you will be also part of the electoral board as I was a candidate last year and see where it took me now. And, uh, <laughs> and so I would also like to say uh, a very big thank you to Patricia on the electoral board for doing lots and lots of work with me. It was really good working with you. And also a great work, a big, big, big thank you and a big bow to Laurier for helping with everything and explaining how it's all supposed to go. And uh, we've been exchanging so many emails that you are now on my favorites list probably. So accidentally, I will definitely keep sending letters to you. And also a big thank you to Gabriele Desiderio. He was the one who made it all, uh, organize everything online and do the whole voting process. I'm not really sure what he did and how he did it, but it, everything worked perfectly. So thanks so much to all of you and uh, good luck to all the new members of the steering committee. So it was good seeing you all. So take care. 
Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, now, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Monica, for uh, and your team for all of its uh, fine work uh, organizing uh, the elections um, during a very challenging uh, period. Uh, um, uh, thank you. And I'd like to also congratulate all of the, uh, uh, the candidates, all of the candidates, uh, uh, and of course, those who were, um, who were selected uh, through this democratic process. Uh, I think it's a very, um, it's a very important uh, and uh, a very uh, worthwhile process. It also uh, enables um, the candidates to think about the program, how they can contribute to the forum, and and to bring about a lot of interesting uh, I new ideas and exchanges. So thank you, uh, thank you all again. Um, we'll move on to the uh, next uh, points of the agenda. So what I'll do is I'll I'll um, uh, I'll share my screen here. Um, <clears throat> I can just, uh, sorry, this is a little bit, uh, um, get back to the agenda. Uh, okay, here it is. Uh, um, <clears throat> so now we'll go on to um, point five has been taken care of. Uh, we'll move on to point six, um, the report of the uh, steering committee activities. And it is uh, uh, Jorge Gustavo Casedo, which who will be presenting. Um, the uh, activities that were undertaken by the uh, steering committee this year. Jorge? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, this, was, <laughs> this was something special. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, all the members of the electoral board. They did a wonderful job by, you know, keep sending the, the invitation for the candidates, it's very important. Um, I think it's, uh, we've been building a stronger organization. Thank you very much, Patricia. Thank you very much, Monica. And I'm very amazed about your, your manage of the Spanish, Monica, you did it pretty well. So uh, this, this way you resolved the draw was amazing. Let me just say, thank you. Thank you for that because you, certainly took a lot of uh, stress in the subject. Of course, all the candidates, and I want to, to rephrase this, are great candidates. I was really impressed by their, by their CVs. I know you have a, a vocation to serve and you wish to come to the, to the forum, uh, providing your experience and your knowledge, and please do apply for coming elections. Uh, I think the best example is Seku. This is his second election, if I, I'm not wrong. And he finally made it. So just please keep, keep, keep in touch and let's build together this great organization. So I will be reading uh, basically the report now. Uh, just give me a second. Oh, thank you. Here it is. So. I'm sorry. Uh, the ICH NGO Forum is grateful for the support uh, of uh, all committee, state parties, and secretaries, and the opportunity to present this um, this report to all the General Assembly of the ICH NGO Forum. Uh, as you all know, we have 193 accredited NGOs. To this day, hopefully new ones, uh, I, I'm sure um, all the regions will grow in number. And uh, I want just to highlight that since uh, 2009, it was delivered the first speech in, in Abu Dhabi. And from there, it grew up uh, with the initiative of various persons who are present now like uh, Jorin, like Antoine, like Diego, like Ananja, like Leonce. Uh, and they built up this forum in 2015. And from there, it grew up to be this uh, organ with elections, democratically elected, and now with bylaws and in an ongoing process to be uh, consolidating for the benefit of all 
accredited NGOs and for the movement of intangible cultural heritage safeguard. So let's talk about the forum. Um, we have a membership that ranges from community-based organizations to larger NGOs, which support national level implementation of the 2003 convention and policy development. To field research, the, the inventory and document intangible cultural practices with local context. Their mix of different types of expertise and experience in the field, grassroots presence in their local society and close relations with peri communities across them uh, position in a unique position to safeguard ICH. So uh, it, it was very challenging this year for us because uh, as you all know, we had to deliver the meetings online. We had uh, several uh, meetings each month, not only one as usually done by the steering committee, but we really tried to keep up with the demands and the needs to promote uh, ICH and the work of the forum as well. By the, by the means of, I'm, I'm going to read quickly just what are the projects and accomplishments for this year as a general thing. And I want you to make questions if you have some, but just to understand what we have been doing. So we have, of course, the major role we had this year, and I think we're very happy, is the increasing participation of accredited NGOs. We have a, a 110 organizations registered uh, on the voting uh, platform for these elections. Unfortunately, not all could um, vote, but the answer is there and they're coming forward. And I think we're building a, a bigger organization. Of course, this has a reason. Uh, we can mention there is a better knowledge of the forum. There is the increased number of service rendered to NGOs such as capacity building, workshops, symposiums uh, at the committee meetings, as well during the year, a permanently accessible and active managed uh, website and now with the financial support we get from UNESCO, it will be possible to talk about how to move forward with, a, with some projects and financial support. Also, there's a, the more elaborate and stronger organizational structure with the creation of the steering committee. A, of course, the bylaws, the code of ethics and the yearly elections. And finally, there is a better heightened sense of belonging to the forum. So, uh, of course, we have, as, as you well know, as part of, the, of the, the forum, it's run by the General Assembly, and it appoints this steering committee, committee who has the mandate to perform certain tasks, and it can... Uh, acknowledge or attribute certain working groups to perform certain jobs. In this, in this sense, uh, the steering committee uh, is working to engage and to collaborate with, this, uh, with these new working groups and the existing working groups. Of course, it's, uh, I'm going to talk about some of them and what's going on with them. The working group on research is made up of over 30 members and has dedicated much of its time to the development of, of a mission statement. They presented, revised, and approved on the margin of the 15 com. And in the subsequent uh, 2021 action plan, uh, which you can check documents on the website uh, of the forum. Uh, one of the activities of the 2021 was the creation of a toolkit on sustainable tourism which will soon be available on the website. And I think they will present uh, some of the findings uh, uh, for this week. So stay tuned on the activities of the research working group. There is also, we created a uh, Mati Hatamaki and uh, Cholponai with the collaboration from other uh, NGOs from different regions created a working group for a more balanced geographical representation of accredited NGOs. As we are all aware, there is an imbalance on the number of registration for accredited NGOs in the regions, in the electoral regions of UNESCO. So in trying to tackle this issue, 
uh, this working group was created uh, uh, established in December 2020 during the 15 com and the working group is currently creating capacity building materials in different language in order to provide practical information to NGOs in the underrepresented countries as well as a mission statements objectives and a working plan for the working groups uh, to be developed uh, and approved now in the 16th uh, so of course uh, we have the heritage alive which is the you know the big uh, the big highlight of the of the ICH NGO forum uh, the work of Ivim has been really really consistent he has always been um, an uh, inclusive editor in chief he has always been open for for collaboration and encourage the the participation of as many accredited NGO as well as people outside from the uh, convention to bring them into the convention it's also a great way to express and to highlight uh, the scope of the intangible cultural heritage uh, of course this uh, 2021 issue of uh, traditional music uh, it's it's it was challenging because i understand they receive a lot of um, uh, articles and they can only publish some but then again it come it opened the door for a new um, website that will host uh, more articles and be uh, made available all this valuable information from the field um, to all accredited NGOs and people related to the ICH safeguarding movement. So uh, there's also a, a link where you can download the music. Please visit the HCAP uh, website to download the, the, the book as well as to get the link, the QR code for uh, getting the, the music. Uh, of course, ICOMOS, as you all know, is a scientific, uh, promoted a scientific committee on ICH and drafted a charter on intangible cultural heritage. This aims to provide a sound basis in terms of principles and guidance for how ICH relate to places and place-based uh, practices. Comments uh, been uh, well, they've been addressed to the ICOMOS ICH Scientific Committee in the spirit of co cooperation and dialogue. We look forward to engaging with ICOMOS about our shared interests as well as our concerns. While the forum welcomes the growing recognition of the importance of ICH in the protection of monuments, architecture, and, and material culture, it will insist that the distinctive features of ICH and tangible heritage be acknowledged and recognized. There is also the participation in the open-ended um, intergovernmental uh, meetings that we've been having, you know, uh, around the convention. And they did these uh, consultants on uh, the listing mechanism in July and September. We presented a statement uh, within those, the, this activity, which was very important, revising all these listing mechanisms. Uh, we can mention maybe just a little paragraph, which is uh, the 2003 convention is currently in a period of growth. While the resources supporting the convention are not, we strongly believe this provides an opportunity in which an expanded range of advisory functions for accredited NGOs within the 2003 convention can be defined as an existing and available option that could address the increasing workload and limited resource of the secretary, which would be of benefit, benefit I'm sorry, for all sides, including the state parties to the convention. Well, of course, there is the mapping of the domains of competencies for the accredited NGOs, and this is very important. This, it, this brings to be the highlight of the work for this year for the steering committee, because uh, we responded to a call uh, for expression of interest sent by the secretary in the 2003 convention. Uh, this was in July, and working closely with the with the living heritage entity on 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 this specific call we were selected which of course 
is uh, due to the representative uh, legitimacy of the steering committee and the importance of having these elections and having these annual meetings, but as well as the ongoing process uh, we have. No, uh, the other thing is uh, <clears throat> we we had to um, the steering committee of the ICH NGO forum completed an online survey sent to all 193 accredited NGOs, as well as to one-to-one -to -one interviews with a sample of 65 accredited NGOs, primarily from underrepresented regions, and it's currently preparing the reports, guidelines, and vocabularies as required by the call of expression of interest. A round table, discussion, and workshop was organized online on Sunday, December 12th, with uh, 78 participants, registered to present the preliminary results of the study. Uh, it was an opportunity to receive feedback on the results and obtain information on the expertise for the accredited NGOs that were not able to be interviewed. It's important to mention that um, this work uh, covered more than 65 accredited NGOs, and it, we're really looking forward to maintain this. I think uh, for the new steering committee, it should be uh, a regular uh, practice and try to get all accredited NGOs uh, on a one to one interview since it really comes to understand what they're doing, what they wish, and where they're heading. And I think it's uh, very good for both parts, no? for the interviewer and the NGO that's been interviewed. Well, the survey and the one-to-one -one interviews have been carried out on a regional basis, according to the regions represented by the steering committee members, as well as um, the international NGOs, which interview international NGOs, and they were performed in the language they represent. This was in Arabic or Spanish, as well as in French and in English. Um, the, the final report, uh, will be delivered within the first month of the coming year. And this is why uh, Laurier mentioned, we wanted to ask the General Assembly for, 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 for um, the opportunity to finish this job, not as a steric company members, but since we've been performing this task to let us finish uh, the, the work we, we've been doing. No? There is also the ECOS project of museums and ICH. This uh, steering, the steering committee accepted an invitation to support the ECO museums and museums as communities for heritage, resilience, openness, and economic sustainability, ECOS, project in its application from an Horizon grant from the European Union. Uh, this project aimed to develop a theoretical framework and a set of toolkits that will be tested on a selected number of partner cultural institutions. This could provide a model for similar projects in other regions of the world. Um, this was presented by another founding member, Valentina Singari, which I hope is present. But anyway, um, I think it's a great project. And uh, I just want to mention that uh, this uh, report of the activities cover the uh, working groups that sent the report to the steering committee and, and those we're reading it as well as the projects we're involved. As for the future of the ICH NGO forum, I think uh, we need to think about uh, what's uh, the requirements for the a sustainable, uh, sustainable implementation of the convention, and what will it take to be to go to the future? <coughs> I would also like to mention in the um, in the recent symposium, uh, we uh, presented not only the mapping exercise, but also uh, we had a conference on ICH and intellectual property licensing and new media. I hope you, if you don't see it you go and visit the, the website, the YouTube channel of the forum, and you can see the videos there. Uh, as well on, as on Tuesday, it, it's important to highlight that we have a conference from local context, uh, and they give us, uh, they share us their methodology on labeling uh, traditional knowledge, traditional cultural expressions in archives and libraries as a process of decolonization 
of archives and libraries. I, this is also available in the in the YouTube channel of the ICH NGO Forum. And finally, uh, I, I wish to to give you all um, the the conclusion of my report. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, thank you, Jorge, for that very um, extensive uh, report. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Are there any questions or comments uh, um, with regard to the report um, by any of the members of the forum? No. Um, so I uh, propose that we adopt the report. Are there any objections? No objections, no one requests uh, the vote. Uh, okay, well, the report is then uh, adopted. Um, thanks again, uh, Jorge, for the uh, fine presentation. Uh, uh, we can go on now to the financial report of the uh, steering committee, uh, which will be presented by Robert Barron, uh, the treasurer. Okay, Robert, uh, do you Thank want you, to- Thank you, and I'll share my screen. Just give me a sec. Yeah. Oh, Hit the wrong button. Uh, share screen. Okay. I think this is it. Yes. Okay. Um, everybody can see my screen. Fantastic. Yes. Yes. We okay. Can see. So um, this this report will appear will appear on the ICH NGO forum website and. Uh, you see our balance is just a little bit over 4,000 uh, euros. And um, what was carried over a year ago was 4,163 euros. Uh, really only two essential, uh, two expenses, essentially. Uh, one was monthly bank fees from Societe Generale for uh, 10, 10 euro 20 each month and 39 euros for charge for a bank card, which will facilitate the um, transfer of funds. And, um, I think you can see that um, in 2017, there was a, a, a income of uh, 14,000. Uh, I have a chart there that tracks it through the years. And um, so let me go through the notes now, uh, exp explanation of the income and expenses. We're expecting $15,000 in revenue from UNESCO for the mapping project. That was our contract with UNESCO. And the funds should be posted to our account by January 2021. UNESCO closes out its uh, fiscal year at the end of December. So we'll be completing that project by then. The pending expenses for the mapping project include included primarily uh, a Zoom account for three months uh, and infographics that are being provided to the NGOs, NGOs who were interviewed. So uh, that means we'll, we'll wind up with a uh, substantial a part of that uh, fifteen thousand uh, dollars that we received, and of course we have four thousand dollars still in our account. Um, we the steering committee has been under discussion about uh, ways to use these funds, and I'm sure the next steering committee will too. One uh, use of the funds that I think we all we all agree on is to provide some funding for working groups for their activities. Uh, working groups as a motor as a, as a, as a pillars of what we do in, at, in the ICH NGO formats that can be used for the project through proposals that will be uh, reviewed. Um, the steering committee members, we, we each did a considerable amount of work on the mapping survey and mapping project, and we are not receiving compensation for that work. And the income from 2017 was a donation from the government of Indonesia and membership fees. So that's a financial report, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. And I'd like to add a really big thanks to Laurier for um, negotiating um, with the bank. We don't have the ideal bank. That's a long story as past uh, steering committee members know, but um, we think we're on a good track now and the money's secure, it's in the bank. <clears throat> I'll stop okay, thank you, uh, thank you, um, thank you, Robert. Uh, um, 
Okay. Uh, thank you for your kind words. It's been a challenge uh, to deal with the pain, <laughs> but uh, I think we're we finally we finally got access to our account. Uh, it took some time, but uh, it's a good thing we don't have two million dollars in it. Otherwise, <laughs> it would have been more of an issue. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we've got uh, we've got that settled, and uh, we're even receiving funds now. So that's great. Uh, uh, thank you. Thanks again, Robert, for your uh, for your report. Um, um, I uh, will now call upon um, the next the next item of the agenda is, of course, the uh, uh, the forums uh, plan of activities for 221. Uh, uh, and uh, it will be uh, Janet Lake that will be presenting uh, that uh, document on behalf of the steering committee. So, Janet. Um, Yep. Uh, thank you, Laurie. I'm just starting a screen share, I hope. Okay, great. That's the plan. Um, it's, I hope you can see it because it's completely disappeared in my screen. <laughs> you can, well, that's good because I can't see anything. I can just see a few faces. Um, I've literally lost my screen, but luckily I have a copy here, so I know what I'm talking about. But I, you're going to have to kind of tell me if my moving from one slide to another is working because I can't actually see it right now. Um, so anyway, first of all, um, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody who's here. It's a great number of people and especially those colleagues of ours in East Asia who must be up in the middle of the night at the moment. So it's really appreciated. Um, um, Janet, Janet, may, yeah. maybe you, excuse me to interrupt. Uh, perhaps no. you can just try the share screen again. It might work the second time around. Uh, oh, it's not. Uh, it's not working for you, oh. or it's not working for me. Okay. Uh, okay. Try, let me go again. Try it again. Uh, yeah. Ah, this looks better. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. It wasn't just me who couldn't see it. It was everybody. I thought it was just me. I don't know, it just like disappeared. Anyway, <laughs> such things are sent to try us when we're online. Thank you for telling me, Laurier. Um, so we are, um, as I think was obvious from the opening statement made by Tim Curtis, the secretary to the uh, convention on the first day, we are at an exciting juncture of the life of the convention. Um, and I think particularly for NGOs and the possibilities for accredited NGOs to expand our role within that whole process. And it's clear that the Secretariat needs more support. And I think the committee is fairly aware of that. So we can only hope that this will it over time lead to an expansion of our, you know, our activities, which are of course our primary purpose, which is to um, advise the committee. Uh, what I'm going to present right now is not obviously an exhaustive list. Um, I certainly don't want to close down <clears throat> options for um, activities next year, but it's rather setting a vision of what we would like to see next year and I should say into the future, because some of these are things that will definitely involve going Ah, this is interesting. Let's see if I can actually move it. Ah, yes, it did move, but it's gone way too far, sorry. It's very difficult. I, I'm on a PDF because I was afraid of the PowerPoint uh, not working. Uh, so anyway, uh, as we know, uh, the accredited NGOs are uniquely well-placed within the various stakeholders of the convention to act as a bridge between the state parties with bearer communities. I think that's one of the primary relationships of importance, but also, you know, mediate among a number of different stakeholders. And obviously the on the ground experience that we have in safeguarding ICH on the ground within local contexts and within a huge variety of local contexts across the globe that take those two things together, it's clear that we have a lot to offer to the process of implementing the convention. And that I should add with the new periodic reporting, states parties are now being asked to report on questions that they alone cannot answer. 
they need us. And I think that we can develop, that's one area that we can develop our expertise to support our own countries in those kind of processes. And of course, we are a very important repository of ICH safeguarding experience in our countries at national level, but also internationally, and a resource for policymakers at all levels. That can be from local governments through national governments, right up to the level of states parties in the committee. But our, as we know, our challenge is to have that recognized in a formal sense. So, you know, we have ambitions for the future. As we know, the paragraph one of Article 9 gives us, of the convention, gives us this advisory role to the committee. But at the moment, that role that we have is really pretty restricted. And <clears throat> we know that there are challenges in extending that role, but we do feel that this is a moment of opportunity for us, an opportunity that we need to seize. Other things that we could consider are to look to find a future position for the forum, which is perhaps more like that of, say, ICOMOS or IUCN within the UNESCO family. In other words, that we are able to present ourselves as a, a sort of single body at the international level, but leveraging this incredible diversity that we have among our membership, which is very unusual. Also, but very importantly, to reach these aims is that we need to substantially redress the imbalance in membership of the forum in terms of the electoral groups, the regional groupings of UNESCO. And of course, there are a number of ways that we can try to do that. Firstly, the existence now of the working group on geographical distribution is extremely valuable, and I'm sure the recommendations will help greatly in that. Beyond that, regional capacity building. And I think that is not just building the capacity of NGOs on a regional basis to help them to become accredited, but perhaps even more important, the capacity of our existing accredited NGOs to reach out to others within their country and region, uh, and also promotion of the forum, of its activities, and sharing information on important matters. And also, it's really important that we find ways to increase our participation in such three meetings of the convention. Uh, this is going to be perhaps take time, but we have to work towards that. And one of the really important ways we can do that is by strengthening ourselves, our operation, so that when states parties look at us, they see an organization that is operating very effectively and has something important to contribute. So if we think about it in terms of what the forum might do internally, certainly improving communications with the member NGOs. This is, some of these are things that came up during the interviews, the 65 interviews that the members of the steering committee conducted regionally. Uh, and that this I think was one that was a common one. And, but at the same time, developing horizontal networking and information sharing among NGOs. So the, the information sharing is operating on different levels here. And the second, obviously, is the case of the forum looking for ways that it can facilitate this networking and information sharing. And one interesting proposal, for example, was for the forum to be a kind of clearinghouse for internships so that NGOs that are able to accept interns can offer that and others might send members. That's just one idea. And of course, finding ways to encourage greater participation of all our members in the activities of the forum, membership of the working groups, obviously of the steering committee, you know, so that we, in the future, we can hope to have several candidates from each region for election, etc. And I think coming to the working groups, it's very important to make sure that just as the ad hoc working group on uh, Article 21 that was established 
was established on the basis of geographical representation that we seek to encourage that in the future in all working groups. And also increasing the impact and effectiveness of the working groups, which are a very important pillar of the work of the forum through the new organizational arrangements that have been already discussed, as well as maybe improving the information sharing and a closer collaboration with the steering committee. To develop the organizational structure and the financing of the forum, which might include some kind of permanent staffing in the future, perhaps that's rather ambitious at this stage, but we're looking to that possibility to develop and increase the capacity of the forum to respond to the new requirements that we hope will be on us with an expanded role at the intergovernmental level. And I think also we could do with creating a more effective online space and presence to allow for, for example, capacity building programs, training, mutual shared experience sessions, et cetera, to be conducted online on an ongoing basis. And we have this wonderful resource at our hands and we're not really exploiting it as much as we could. And what the forum, you know, what the vision for the future might be on the, as it were, the external level, the relationship of the forum with other bodies. Certainly continuing and finishing the mapping project in order to maximize its benefits where it can really put the range of expertise that we have, our added value on the table. It's an excellent opportunity for us to do that, that we have something concrete to show. And included in that is promotion of member NGOs through the infographics that are being created for each of the NGOs that were interviewed, where we will then, each one will have a visual representation of the, you know what, my battery is just going, I don't really know because I should be plugged in. Give me two seconds. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, that was a problem with the connection, but I've sorted it. So hopefully I'm not going to get cut off. Um, so the infographics, I think, are will be a very, very valuable promotional tool for the NGOs themselves, but also for the forum equally to be able to say, look, this is what we've got to offer. To continue to have the strong engagement we have with the evaluation body, it's very important that member NGOs continue to put themselves forward across all of the electoral groups when they have the opportunity to become members. We have a very special expertise to bring to it. And the more that we do that, the more we can show our value to the committee processes. And I think we should seek more opportunities for this kind of engagement. So, for example, reflections such as the one on NGO involvement and the ongoing reflection at the moment on the listing mechanisms and also the discussion that will come up in Article 18. All of these are opportunities for us to put down on the agenda what we can bring to the process. And we can leverage the capacity that working groups have to prepare, for example, reports or briefing documents that are targeted specifically to the committee and secretariat. Increasing cooperation with other international NGOs and organizations such as ICOMOS, IUC and WIPO, and treaty bodies even, World Heritage Committee, the uh, Convention on Diversity of Cultural Expressions body, and even Secretariat of CBD. You know, we, we can start doing that because if we do that, we raise our profile as an international NGO. And finally, but last but not least, working to secure a permanent seat with speaking rights at all intergovernmental meetings of the convention and, of course, the strategy meetings, but not only the statutory meetings, and to present a united voice in this forum. So as I say, this is a setting a vision, maybe somewhat aspirational in places, but no harm in aspiring to things. And uh, so thank you very much for your attention. Obviously, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to try to respond to them.
Okay, it looks like Hannah has her hand up. Laurie, do you want to? Yes, Hannah. Uh, sorry, <laughs> go ahead, Hannah. Uh, please um, take the floor. Thanks. I will be very brief. It's a super ambitious plan, and it looks uh, really fantastic. And also, though it is ambitious, it is also feasible, I believe. And uh, it is, you know, a great, uh, a great uh, challenge for the future steering committee. Uh, maybe I will ask a question regarding something uh, less formal. But uh, can you share us uh, with us, Janet? your uh, feelings or the steering committee feelings about the position of the secretariat towards uh, these growing uh, visibilities of NGO uh, forum. Yeah. I mean, I have nothing very um, formal to share on this. I think, I mean, it's ambivalent, probably, because on the one hand, I think, maybe traditionally, not maybe, definitely, traditionally NGOs have been regarded within the Secretariat. And I'm not speaking of any particular members, I'm speaking of a historical position that NGOs have been rather regarded as a bit of a kind of nuisance, but not to give us too much room to maneuver. But I think frankly right now that is beginning to shift. And I think it's beginning to shift partly because they really need help and they're not getting it from the states parties on the committee, not as much as they need. And, and I think also the longer that the forum exists and they work with us, they see that we actually do have a lot to offer them. And the, the fact of asking us to do this mapping project, I mean, coming to us after the call to do that, then that I think is a very positive sign. And I think, I think they will be happy with what we've done. I mean, that's important too. And that they will see from that that working with us is a value to them. Uh, thanks so much, Janet, uh, for, for this explanation, because yes, indeed, it's, I share the same feeling. I just wanted to, to, to make it clear because we also hear during different meetings that that we have to all remember that it is a states parties convention. Uh, and uh, as we know, this discussion is ongoing also regarding the involvement of communities. If I may also add one idea that just came from my heart, it is not elaborated and it is not something uh, you know, but I have a strict uh, opinion about. But uh, I was very moved by by what Marco was telling about Al Albert and reminding us all about Albert. And we all keep uh, Albert in our hearts. And as he himself was the founder of the research working group within the NGO forum, and he was so dedicated to that, I thought maybe we can think about maybe in the future creating you know, an award in memory of Albert for the research on the NGOs dealing with ICH issues. It doesn't have to be an annual award. It might be one time in the memory of Albert. So we can also together, of course, and in collaboration with the family and that the family should agree, of course, for, for this and with Ken. So just an idea uh, as something for the future that might also unite the spirit uh, of uh, friendliness and of our common dedication to the work we are doing here together. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Sorry, I was pointing at you to mean go ahead, Gustavo, I think it's your no, pleasure. No, no. Uh, please, Laurier, uh, uh, we, we got to follow the agenda. We are, we're on. It's a wonderful on time. suggestion. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, it's a wonderful suggestion, Hannah. I think, uh, you know, it's something we should consider seriously. I think it would be uh, uh, a very nice thing to do um, uh, in memory of Albert, uh, uh, because, um, you know, I, 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 uh, everyone that I've ever talked to uh, appreciated Albert very much. Uh, and uh, I certainly did and, and you know, enjoyed, uh, enjoyed uh, speaking and exchanging with him very much. And uh, uh, I've only heard you know, very, very positive things about Albert. So I think it would be a, a very nice gesture and and it would also be a tribute to Albert, but also a tribute to our organization and and to our, um, you know, uh, uh, it, it would be really an honor, I think, uh, to have such a, a prize. Uh, and, uh, you know, who knows, um, 
uh, where, where our budget is increasing. I mean, <laughs> very modestly, but, but uh, you know, uh, if we keep getting more contracts from the secretariat and everyone is goodwilled about uh, uh, chipping in and, and working, uh, you know, giving their time, uh, well, uh, you know, I think we may have a fund that will allow uh, to, um, to give a, a, a noteworthy prize. Uh, so thank you so much. I'm sure that that will be something that will be considered very seriously. Uh, um, now uh, we have to, of course, move on. Thanks also, Janet, for that very uh, uh, complete uh, report. Uh, uh, very well presented. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, now um, <coughs> we um, have to move on to with the agenda. Um, now, uh, the next point is uh, the resolution uh, the resolution uh, concerning uh, the current members of the steering committee that are working on the mapping project. Uh, we did indicate that, um, you know, we, we uh, as Janet stated, and also uh, um, Jorge, uh, that we have been working intensively uh, on this mandate that was uh, given to us by the, uh, by the, uh, by the uh, Living Heritage Unit. Uh, and um, uh, we, it, it is not completed. Uh, it, uh, uh, we are uh, near completion, but uh, we still have a few, uh, uh, maybe a month or two to work on it, to finalize. We have all of the, we have all of the data. We're in the process of uh, analyzing it and preparing a, a documentation that we will be giving to uh, the Living Heritage Unit. And so um, we are uh, asking you uh, to, we are presenting this resolution and asking you to accept it so that uh, these members uh, can stay on and help us complete this task. So um, I will just share the screen so that you have, uh, we have a resolution that's been prepared here and I would like to read it out to you, okay? Uh, can you see my screen uh, now? Is it, uh, yes? Okay, great, 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 great. Um, so this is, the, this is the resolution as we've prepared it. Uh, it's called Resolution on the Project for Mapping NGO Expertise. Conscious of the importance of mapping the expertise of member organizations of the NGO Expertise Mapping Project that the steering committee of the ICH NGO Forum is currently conducting under an agreement concluded with the UNESCO Secretariat, considering that the current members of the steering committee, 220-221, have been working on this project since August of 221, and in that time have des designed and administered an online survey of accredited NGOs, conducted in-depth interviews with a representative sample of the NGOs from each electoral region or each electoral group, excuse me, developed a draft list of vocabulary items and prepared a draft report Taking into account also the importance of ensuring continuity in completing this ongoing process, the members of the ICH NGO forum present, present pardon me, at the General Assembly meeting uh, being held online on 15th of December, 221, agree that the seven members of the steering committee during 220, 221 that have been involved in conducting this mapping project, that is myself, Koloyan Nikolov, Jorge Gustavo Saisodo, Janet Blake, Reem Sekir, and uh, uh, Siko Burt and Robert Barron shall continue to work on this mapping project until the submission of the final work required under the contract concluded with UNESCO. So that is the, um, that is the resolution. Um, are there any, any questions, um, comments? Lorier, I just Yes. I would like to ask that uh, this was a paid project, but uh, none of the members of the steering committee, we all declined to receive any payment, and it's in the fund of the ICH NGO forum. And so this is important for the people to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, uh, Jorge, you could give an idea of the, of the amount that is involved. Oh yeah, it's a fifteen thousand dollars project, <laughs> and and we we leave it. It's it's going to in. We still have to pay the designer and stuff that we cannot uh, perform. I I mean we're from NGOs, but uh, it will be 
$10,000 we're, we're projecting that will be remaining in the account after paying all the expenses, the Zoom accounts and the, for the interviews and the designer and all that we need to give the, the deliverables specified and in the call. Okay. Um, are there any, any questions or comments regarding this resolution? No, are there any objections? I hear no objections, therefore the resolution is adopted. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, um, now, um, we, um, oh yes, we have the uh, point 10, decision regarding article 21 of the bylaws. Uh, now there's been a working group, um, an ad hoc working group uh, that has been, uh, um, uh, working on this and uh, um, representing uh, all of the uh, electoral regions of UNESCO. Uh, and I believe, uh, Hannah, you will be uh, giving us a, a presentation of, of that, um, of your work. So uh, do you wanna, do you wanna share the screen? Yes, yes, thank okay. you so much. Yeah. Uh, so basically as we are uh, not, uh, Having lots of time, I would like to uh, to to say a few words about how we worked. Uh, so these are the members of all regions, as you can see. Can you see my 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 file? Yes, that's yes. great. Yeah. Yes. I, I particularly avoided the PowerPoint and slideshow because of the encountered Zoom problems already. So I would like to say that it was truly a collaborative work with all people really sharing their time and expertise. So we were all equal in terms of, you know, leading and changing the leadership and uh, the, the amount of work delivered to the group. So I'm only the voice of all of uh, names that you can see here, but I would like to thank the whole group for the spirit of cooperation and dedication. As you can see, we have met uh, uh, six times uh, and uh, these meetings were usually for two, more than two hours long. So we really took uh, care about taking into account all possible details. And then we prepared by the end of August, uh, the, the final, uh, I would say, introduction to the problem plus the survey. Uh, however, as you could see, uh, uh, there were some other issues also regarding to the translation into French version, and also there were issues related to the ongoing mapping exercise. And as uh, we all agreed that we cannot, you know, spam your uh, email boxes with, uh, uh, you know, a terrible amount of questionnaires, so it was uh, postponed. So actually, the, what is going to happen that you will receive, I think, uh, this questionnaire and the issue uh, that was worked out uh, was um, related to Article 21 and to the issue of the conflict of interest. This topic is quite uh, important uh, when it comes to international civil servants and to civil servants or academic researchers, maybe, may, mainly. Uh, and there are many code of conduct uh, related to uh, conflicts of interests, uh, and we were actually doing some research about uh, to which code of conduct uh, refer our work, and we decided together that we shall not uh, uh, that we should take into account uh, the um, the regulations that uh, that are related uh, uh, to the UN system. So those regulations who do help to uh, maneuver in this complicated United Nations system to international civil servants. So uh, the conflict of interest is uh, mainly the situation when you have accumulative uh, functions. Uh, usually we all have, especially those from underrepresented regions. Uh, we have problem related to the cumulative functions. For example, we serve the NGO forum, but at the same time we serve to our delegation. And so the definition of the conflict of interest uh, you may find here. Uh, these are circumstances in which uh, somebody uh, directly or indirectly may benefit improperly or allow a third party to benefit improperly from their association with their organization. So basically the whole issue is about how to solve the possible conflict of interest 
uh, in relation to the functions of a steering committee member. So especially it will be important if you decide to represent your region in the steering committee, then you have to take into account this specifically, uh, specifically a delicate situation if you also are asked by your country or by any other organization. And uh, of course, this uh, definition, as you could see, uh, is relevant for international civil servants. And as we all know, steering committee members are sheer volunteers uh, who really sacrifice everything, even the money, for the sake of the NGO forum, and not mentioning the time and uh, other burdens. So. Um, uh, so we are not here as international civil servants, we are not paid by, uh, by UNESCO for this work. Uh, however, uh, as we are in the United Nations system, we have to take into account how, the perceive, uh, how the, we might be perceived within the system. So uh, we decided to uh, create a survey. Uh, the survey purpose was to, is to learn the position of each accredited NGO on this possibility of uh, the conflict of interests. And uh, the survey consists of questions on understanding and identifying conflict of interest. So you will see, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm doing it fast, but I know that we have to be quick and you will receive everything here. So the aim of my speech right now is just to make you familiar and alerted to the possible coming questionnaire, uh, I hope quite soon. And we would truly appreciate that uh, though you are burdened with all other tasks, you'll still find time to help us uh, uh, solve this issue and in a collaborative, inclusive and democratic way, discuss how we can as NGO Forum act in a transparent way, but also in a way that do, in, I would say, embrace whole variety of situations we encounter in different regions of the world. Uh, I would say that uh, taking into account the structure of NGO forum, uh, where we are all, almost all coming from underrepresented regions. Uh, so, so, and we all know from our own experiences how hard it is only to remain uh, solely the representative of NGO if we really want to take part actively in the in this ICH convention. I must myself say that my NGO has never given me, you know, a, even one, one penny, one dollar for my coming to UNESCO meetings. It was always paid by my country or by my university. So I had to, you know, combine my, 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 my service to my NGO also with some functions to the delegation. I'm not in the steering committee, but I can really understand how complicated it may be. So just to give you, you know, a slight idea of uh, what has been done, I would like once again to thank every member of our working group uh, and uh, to kindly ver uh, ask you for your, for your participation in the incoming survey. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Hannah. I, I got to step up uh, as chair of the steering committee and give a warm uh, thank you for all the people present, especially for the translator that uh, the translators that UNESCO provided. I have now to propose an extraordinary meeting for the finishing of everything that's in the for in, we couldn't touch because they're closing in one minute the session, but uh, everything will be resolved in this extraordinary meeting that will be uh, called by the new steering committee for myself, for Kaloyan and for Rim. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to do it this way, but uh, we are honored. I'm sorry, and we are Gustavo. happy to have this. Okay. To have this opportunity, please let us finish, please. Yeah, yeah, but I'm it's sorry. A, it's a procedure uh, point, please. Please, Jorge, please procedure let us point. finish. Yeah, They're procedure point. The... Just, just to finish the procedure, we should have another meeting now this week because the 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 is not finished. There will be called by the new steering please. committee. It's not my responsibility. Thank you very much, it's everybody. The please. Responsibility of thank this you for same participating. assembly to call another one. So. I just asked the assembly, I'm, our I'm assembly sorry. to call another one, please. Thank you. 
it will be the work of the new steering committee. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody. I hope uh, we work and serve you well. And I hope the new steering committee will have all the opportunity to keep on working. Thank you. And it's been my honor, as well as Kaloyan and Rim. Thank you very much. We're leaving the steering committee. All the best for you. But we'll be working on the ICH. Thank you. I'd like to. I'd like to maybe just uh, say uh, uh, thank uh, Jorge, the, the outgoing members of the steering committee, uh, Jorge, Kaloyan, uh, Reem, uh, for their wonderful work. It's really been a pleasure uh, uh, working with you, and uh, uh, you know we we were happy to have your experience. Uh, you you were on the steering committee for for several years, uh, uh, and uh, you know uh, helped us uh, share that experience with us and. It was really, uh, it was really um, a very, a very, a very, uh, very good experience, and and thank you for your dedication. I can say that you were really very, very dedicated to uh, to the forum. Thank you so much. Just a question about the financial report: whether the, 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 you'll get a copy of it. It's going to going to be posted on the uh, forum website, so you can look for that there. Okay. Just a little bit of delay getting it on. Okay, thank you. I will have an extraordinary meeting, I guess. Bye. 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 Thank you, Gustavo. Great work. Bye. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Hi, I just passed by to say hi, actually. Oh, hi, Suzanne. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> hi, Shannon. Hey, Suzanne. Hi, Maureen. Hi, everybody. Love hi. to see you. Hi, and bye. <laughs> yeah, I'm missing the, the real encounters. <laughs> ciao. Yeah, ciao. Bye. Yeah. Goodbye, and thank you for... Hello, for goodbye to everyone. Bye from Italy. Bye. Bye, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for staying up, Gara. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. 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 Wonderful to see you all. Thanks. Thank, thank you, you so much. Great. You too. Let's see what we do.